gold, ability materials, gear, training materials. I have hoarded all of these, and now I will use them to build the characters and teams. I am Dogbert. I will be your guide on this journey as we try to discover if they are worth it. Hello and welcome to Worth It. I am Dogbert and today we are going to be talking about Kingpin. Now this is a character I built for my turd challenge. If you don't know what that is, my turd challenge is I build up a character who we think is a turd to gear 16, level 85, take him into Dark Dimension 5 and try to one-shot nose with them on the team. Well, I did that with Kingpin. And you're going to see a turd challenge with him in the future here shortly. But what I found with Kingpin was kind of surprising. He's not a turd. That's for sure. Well, I guess you can always already know if he's going to be worth it or not. So let's look at his pros. The minion on spawn with taunt. This actually gives him great longevity because he's one of those rare things where you have a pre taunting tank because of that minion on spawn of course this can be countered by kestrel but that's only one character in a host of teams that somebody would then have to try to work into whatever team they're he's with uh to, to counter them so you gotta that makes them have to think and use something else he can call assist with his basic or on his turn or any villain's turn so that's something to keep in mind also, he can summons more minions who can taunt. They don't taunt by default, though. You actually have to use their special ability. And they, these minions actually hit very hard. In Dark Dimension 5, I had them hitting for over 240,000 in one hit. That's quite a lot, especially for a minion. And he can give defense up and offense up the entire team. Do not underestimate defense up and offense up on the entire team. It doesn't rely on Underworld. He just does it with his ultimate. And that is quite valuable. And he gets sped up when he is attacked. To be exact, he gets 20% uh, speed bar, which is quite a lot of speed bar, actually. And he also will give this to his minions. And if he has any other underworld minions with him, such as the one summoned by Noble or Mr. Negative, they'll get sped up, too. So... A lot of good things with him. Of course, he works best on his team because he does have some team synergies. As we look into his cons, his base speed is slower on the 107 speed uh, range. His, cha his chance to call an assist is only 50% on his turn. And he also has a 50% on his basic. So technically, it is possible to get a double assist although rare because of the chances here you need 50 you need to base the passive to go off and the basic to go off you have to be using the basic to get those two assists but i have done it so it is possible to do just not a very high chance and this is a little bit more about his con is he is a, bit, a little bit more on the rng side but the interesting thing is also he affects villains on the team guess what his minions are they're villains so that means whenever the minions take a turn, they have a 50% chance to call an assist as well, which is quite important. So even though it's a con, you can kind of understand why they did this. If it was 100% or you had a way to make it 100%, you'd be very broken. His focus resistant bumps would be nice if he gave it to the whole team, but he only gives it to underworld allies, unfortunately. So... Now, I think we already know that Kingpin is definitely worth it, so we don't even need to ask this question. Now, where is he worth it? This might surprise you, and we're going to have to go into his kit to explain a little bit more why. Cosmic Crucible. Obviously, with a pre, uh, essentially a, a pre-taunting tank here, he's actually very good as a plug-and-play character for when you want to screw something up and make some, get somebody stuck behind an annoying taunt. So that will give him longevity in Cosmic Crucible, never mind the fact that his team's okay in Cosmic Crucible, but he himself is a very good plug-and-play character for this. So you might want to consider that if you need a taunt like that. So he's definitely worth it for Cosmic Crucible. Raids. No. Don't do it. I know there's stupid people out there who say, oh, use Kingpin for Node 1 and Skill Notes. No. Don't do it. 
because you're taking up Maria on that first skill node, and then she doesn't have the energy to get the heal off on the second skill node, you're screwing yourself up on the second skill node, learn to play the fucking first skill node. There's things you can do if Captain Sand gets slowed. There's things you can do if you get Kestrel slowed or Shang-Chi gets slowed. It's okay. There's ways to do it. I've done it. You just have to learn how to play and adapt. I know it's kind of hard for some people. They don't want to learn how to have to think and adapt. But this is a game. This is what you got to do. Do not bring Kingpin into the skill raid notes. Arena. Yep. This is one of those things I found surprising. I'm going to be uh, putting a couple of videos, or video at least, one video at least, onto this so you can see the arena. And we're going to talk a bit about this a bit more when we look at his kit of why he's arena viable and why I'm even using him on my arena defense and offense now. Because I'm still in the early testing phases, but already the early testing phases have him defeating some pretty good comps. Yep, Kingpin is part of the arena now. War. Obviously, this is a war character, both offense and defense with his team. He is quite good with that. Even once his team starts falling off, again, because of that prey taunting tank, and there's so few of them, he can be useful again as a plug-and-play character. So he has probably the most longevity out of them all because of this. And Dark Dimension. Well, that's the whole reason why I built him originally, and I found out he's actually quite good in Dark Dimension 5 in those city nodes. So he gets a lot of check marks, that's for sure. But my suggested level and gear level for most people will be gear 15, level 85. Is he worth taking to 90 and G16? Absolutely yes, if you want to do that. But in reality, he doesn't need that level investment to actually do what he needs to do. Will he do his job better there? Yes, because his minions get bigger as he gets bigger. So taking him to 90 in gear 16 isn't such a bad idea. And don't forget, he is skill gear, and we don't have anybody who needs skill gear for Apocalypse yet. We don't know what those several strike characters are. So with all this said, I wanted to go break down that arena a little bit more. So let's take a look at Kingpin in-game so I can explain a little bit more. Now, this is my uh, Kingpin on Dogbert. Like I said... Well, let me move myself over here a little bit easier to see. Like I said, I did build him up for DD5 specifically. This is why he is gear 16. Now, if you're looking for an ISO suggesting, I do suggest Fortifier. You'll see why in his kit. As far as T4s, if you're looking for those, it's only the special and the ultimate. Uh, if you want to do the passive, if you're using the full team and you care about more like war and stuff, that would definitely be useful. A 30% focus and resistance for Underworld would definitely be helpful. But let's look at this uh, passive also. So you can see here is where we start talking about the bodyguard getting a taunt and two death proof. This actually helps in arena because now you can't just go after, say, Spider Weaver on the first turn right away, depending on what kind of comp you're running. And then you have this on turn or villain ally's turn, 50% chance to assist now. Obviously on his turn it's going to happen, on his minion turns it's going to happen, but who else is a villain that we use in the arena? Oh, wait. Dormammu's a villain. So guess what? Now you have a 50% chance to get an assist when Dormammu goes. And if you're using the team I'm using, you have a pretty good chance of getting somebody really good on that. And then on top of this, at the end of his turn, if he has barrier, which he should if he's fortifier, he's going to give speed up and offense up to his summoned minions. And like I said before, they don't hit or anything small. They're pretty good in reality. You don't really see it, but their damage is pretty good for a minion, and they hit pretty hard. And don't forget, they're going to get offense up and speed up on top of this. Now, we can, if you do T4 the basic on Kingpin, you would upgrade this to another 60% damage to them. So that's something to consider if you want your more damaging minions, assuming they're surviving long enough. But the other thing they do is they also apply a vulnerable, which means that whatever character they're attacking is going to start taking 10% more damage if they didn't already have vulnerable and help enable some strikers on your team or something to do some more stuff like that. Because the T4 normally on this, it's not very, it's 60% for him. He doesn't do a whole lot of damage. 
he does get 10% more uh, barrier back, and of course that 50% chance to call a random ally. And this assist can be very important on the team, especially if you're using for Marina. Now you do put the T4 here to get three bodyguards instead of uh, a chance of only two. Uh, it's two to three, depends. Uh, the other bonus is if you are big on war offense, he'll give safeguard to Underworld as well. That could help out if you're using him there. But the main thing is to get the guaranteed three bodyguards because that's more people that can call assists. And finally, you need this T40. Always give apply, always apply the offense up to self and all allies. And this is a guaranteed assist. So he does a lot of assisting, calling a lot of assisting. If you have skirmisher on the team, it's going to help out them as well. So, what team am I using in the arena that's so good with him? Well, I'll show you right here. Here's my defense. It's Kingpin, Red Hulk, Spider Weaver, Domamu in 2099. And the first thing that's probably coming to your mind is what happens when you face a Kestrel defense with this team? Well, honestly, you don't get the first minion out there, but then after that, don't forget, he can summon the minions uh, in the future as well, so you can get them back. He also gives up that offense and defense up. He's calling assist and helping it making Dormammu even better. And believe it or not, I was actually able to take out a Kestrel defense with Kingpin on the team. Was it very clean? No, but it went quite well. I've taken out other 99 Spider Weaver comps. What I do in that is I go and ability block their Spider Weaver with my 99 rather than using 99's ultimate first turn. And that allows me to get enough control where their Weaver can't go and get the, the charges and, and I can make them miss when they can't make me miss. And if it's the Horseman and Spider Weaver, well, you get to laugh at them because they're not going to be hitting anybody. And if they have Morgan Le Fay, that minion comes in quite handy because the minion is going to be the target of Morgan Le Fay. Which means she's not going to be able to take that disrupt off of Dormammu. Which means Dormammu keeps his disrupt. Means he can go under invis if he starts getting focused. They're going to have a bit harder time taking out Dormammu. And if they do something stupid like run Dormammu and the Four Horsemen, congratulations, you have an easy win. Archangel is a non-factor. Because when he finally gets a turn, Spider Weaver has charges. He can't one-shot Dormammu. He doesn't hit anybody. It's annoying, though, when he you lose a minion and he pings you. But you can definitely get through that. You have plenty of damage with Red Hulk and Spider Weaver and all that. Never mind the fact that if you get the assists calling, he does quite well. And to show you my point, I'm going to do another arena battle right now on this video versus this defense. This was my old defense, but we're going to get some gear 17 horsemen here. I'm not going to actually win the battle. I'm going to quit out before I win. I don't want to take the spot right now. Plus I can't test <laughs> in case somebody else goes against him or somebody else knocks me down. Gives me a little bit more time to test things out. Like I said, this is still early testing, but I've had 100% success using Kingpin. I've been able to overcome anything in this particular uh, build. Um, we absolutely destroy him. We're going to use 2099's uh, ultimate turn one. We want to stun the rogue. Don't forget, because he is skill, he doesn't speed up Morgan at all. And you can see, here comes the missing. So what good is Red Hulk's awakened ability going to do against this team? Nothing at all, because he missed. And we're going to take that off. So now we have a choice. We want to use the ultimate because we want the offense up and defense up for our team. Believe it or not, I'm actually gonna use, I use Skirmisher and Domamu so I can stun their Domamu. Now we had the minions going. Congratulations, I got an assist. Get fucked, Domamu. We make sure she can't uh, do her shenanigans with her taunt. She already lost her revive once, that's good. So now we're going to use Spider Weaver. We're going to finish her off. Let her bounce into somebody else. That's fine. Oh, no. They have OG Hulk, so they got a taunt. So we'll have to work through that for a minute here. Here comes Morgan. She resets everything. Not a big deal. They have already set off my Red Hulk. There goes their Hulk. That's fine. 
Yeah, you can hit her all day. You're not going to kill her. Let's get rid of their OG Hulk. Thank you. Let's get rid of that revive once off of Morgan. Goodbye. Now we're going to actually bring out minions. They Oh, they do get taunt and death proof. Sorry, I got that wrong earlier. I forgot. I thought they didn't get taunt and death proof on spawn. I think I've been playing too much DD5. Oh, look at this. Now it's time for Damamu. Heals us all up. Goodbye, Morgan. You see where this is going. Now I would set off Red Hulk here. Though this is kind of annoying that he flipped all my buffs. But you can see where this is going. We have a stunned Red Hulk. And I would obviously kill him. I'm going to quit out now. But you can see just how easy I was able to take this team out with Kingpin. He does help out with those minions. He does help out with those assists. Now I don't have to splice in another video. <laughs> that was pretty much the video I was going to show. So different things can happen. I'm still doing some testing. So if you've already built Kingpin up, if you can test against some other comps and let me know, that would be very much help. That would be very helpful for me. Because I am limited on the amount of attacks I can do with Dogbert. Catbert doesn't have him built yet. So I hope this uh, video is helpful and informative. And I'll see you next. Until next time, everybody.